Welcome to the heart of Detroit, Campus Marshes Park. Well, actually, this is the center of Detroit. The heart of the region could be found just about everywhere. I'm Stephen Clark. And I'm Carolyn Clifford. And we want to welcome you to a brand new show called Taking Action for Detroit. We're bringing together local businesses and community organizations in order to help make a difference in our community. Now, this is a staggering figure. One out of five people across the metro area will go hungry this holiday season. So, our first story is about an organization taking action to meet that staggering need. We're talking about Forgotten Harvest, and they have actually rescued 45 million pounds of healthy, fresh food, and they've delivered it to more than 280 agencies across Wayne, Oakland, and Macomb counties. Now, Forgotten Harvest has a fresh new idea. You could say it's a growing solution to a growing problem. As light comes over this Livingston County farm and a new day dawns, Fresh ideas are being harvested from fields of possibility. Thank you guys for coming out today. We really appreciate it. This is no ordinary farm, and these workers are no ordinary farm hands. We have monster, gigantic, huge zucchini that is out in our field right now. You're going to see the most amazing zucchini you've ever seen in your life today. This farm is just a magical place. It's a place where the entire community is welcome to come in and help their neighbors in need. The farm is part of the ongoing mission of Forgotten Harvest, the largest food rescue operation in the nation. Susan Goodell is the president and CEO. The challenges that hungry families face is that they have very limited dollars with which to feed themselves and their families. And so by um, buying some of the cheapest foods available, which tend to be high fat, high sugar foods, uh, they're able to stretch their dollars. But it, what it does to them, uh, to their bodies, is really unconscionable. Um, people really need to have a healthy diet of fresh meats, dairy, fruit, vegetables. and. With this farm, we're able to provide those fruits and vegetables that our families need but can't afford. Susan visited a farm in Israel and came home to Detroit with a new idea. Use a workforce of community volunteers to plant, tend, and harvest fresh fruits and vegetables that would provide nourishing options for those in need. They found a small plot of land in Macomb County and started to till the soil. It soon became clear this big idea to serve a big need would require a much bigger farm. Nora Maroon had the answer. This is our family farm. It's called Ore Creek Farm. It's been in our family for 50 years. Nora donated the use of her family's 100-acre farm to Forgotten Harvest in memory of her beloved grandmother, who taught Nora about giving back when she was just a young child. When I would go and visit her, Often we would be hanging clothes out on the line or doing a chore and a knock would come on the door and it was somebody that was hungry and she would open her door, invite them in and then ask me to set the table and she would prepare a hot meal for them and while they were eating we packed a lunch and put it in a little brown bag with a cord around it and when they left we said a prayer that tomorrow they would find someone that would open their door. So I thank you from the bottom of my heart and I thank you from Forgotten Harvest to share. This farm could never ever be without you and you and you and you. That's what you'll see out there is you'll see rows of black plastic with uh, acorn squash plants growing on them. Mike Yancho was just a small boy when he started working on a farm just up the road. The land had been in Mike's family for generations. He joined Forgotten Harvest last spring. My first day on the job was April 23rd. And uh, we came out here on the 24th. There was fields of alfalfa. We had a tractor and a couple um, small pieces of tillage equipment. And that was it. So new equipment came. And so did a daily stream of dedicated volunteers. They come out here uh, on, a, on an almost daily basis, give 100, 110%. They leave dirty and sweaty everything out here except for the corn. It was all planted by hand. And that's thousands of volunteer hours putting those seeds in the ground. Just to see what people are capable of, that's a reward in itself. On an average day, we can yield anywhere from 16,000 to 26,000 pounds of beautiful fresh produce. But our record is 78,000 pounds. It's just been incredible. Volunteers come from all across Metro Detroit. Schools, corporations, neighborhoods, churches. 
all dedicated to helping make the farm a success. We've had some kids out here picking corn that, uh, that do an amazing job. We've had some of the corporate groups that, that just run right through and, and just pick like crazy. There was one day when we uh, first started harvesting, well, there's a small gap in our, our uh, volunteer schedule. And so uh, we put the word out on Facebook and uh, in some of the media outlets, and uh, we had uh, six people show up. I think it was a Wednesday morning, and it started raining as soon as they got here and didn't quit raining until they left. And uh, I think they picked 2,000 pounds of squash each um, during, that, uh, during that downpour, soaking wet, and never complained once. And so that was, I knew right then and there that, uh, yeah, we could get this done if, if people continue to step up to the plate and uh, hit it out of the park like that. It was amazing. Watching these semi-loads of food leave here, knowing that we've done a lot of good, you know, it'll be 30, 40,000 meals that go out on a truck. We run a fleet of 34, 35 large refrigerated trucks that are on the road constantly picking up fresh fruit, vegetables, baked goods, prepared foods, meats, dairy, that sort of thing, and delivering it to where it's needed most, to the soup kitchens, shelters, and pantries throughout our region. The challenge that we have with fresh fruits and vegetables is that, frankly, during the height of the season, we have very limited access to those items. And also in the winter months, when there's snow on the ground, it's also often very difficult for us to get those items, but they're desperately needed by our neighbors in need. So by having this farm, we're able to ensure that we have a year-round supply. The money that I have left over from my uh, uh, Social Security is so little that you cannot buy anything that's nutritious. You know, you have to buy whatever is available, whatever is filling, and that's not always nutritious. The days are gone when we could expect the government to do for us. Uh, the days are back when people have to look out for each other. Forgotten Harvest is hoping this farm will serve as a model for communities around the country. They believe just as the crops grow, so will the volunteer workforce, and so will the number of people they will ultimately be able to feed. I do believe that Forgotten Harvest is going to grow their farming program. I do believe the universities, I think, will get involved. In five years, I still want a volunteer program because each one of those volunteers takes home just like I did with my grandmother, a special um, connection to the real um, participation in helping somebody that's hungry. We believe that it's our job to make sure that the kids are fed and the seniors and the families as well. But it's our job to figure out what do we need to do, how do we do it, and how do we get the food to the people in need. And I think the community loves success. And I think people love to be involved with success. And so we are able to draw a lot of people into that vision. And with those many hands, we feed a lot of people. Now, if you'd like to volunteer or make a donation, go online to ForgottenHarvest.org, or you can call 1-888-332-7140. Now, coming up, some of our favorite Detroit Lions team up with young fans to take action. Don't go away. Taking Action for Detroit is brought to you by Priority Health, a healthier approach to health care. First Merit Bank, we're here to help. IBEW Local 58 and the National Electrical Contractors Association. The best contractors, the best electricians, period. Remember back in the day when you'd play dodgeball and, and hopscotch on the playground? That was the four square camp. <laughs> nice. Well, today a lot of schools are being forced to cut their budgets for physical education and for recess, especially in urban areas. And that's not a good thing because right now childhood obesity rates and diabetes rates are on the rise. Well, fortunately, our partners at the Detroit Lions are tackling that problem head on. Uh, former players and current players are lacing up their tennis shoes and they're heading off to local playgrounds in the Eastern Market. They're showing kids that eating well and exercise aren't only good for you, it's also fun. Cool. All right, ready? Say go. Oh! There's a new kid on the playground, and the word is he's definitely got game. Lions running back Reggie Bush recently paid a visit to Woodward Academy in downtown Detroit, taking recess 
to a whole new level. As NFL athletes, it's important for us to be uh, active in the community, um, especially, uh, I feel like, uh, in communities where we can really make a difference. It's all part of the Lions outreach program called Living for the City, focused on promoting sustainable health and wellness initiatives in the community. Current and former Lions players partner with other local organizations sharing the same goal. Today, Reggie is working with Playworks. Playworks is a nonprofit organization that utilizes recess to help improve the health and well-being of kids um, throughout the community, especially low-income schools. Today was an opportunity for Reggie Bush to come out and really talk about the importance of physical activity and play, and not just talk the talk, but also walk the walk. Hopefully I can be a role model to some of these kids and, and uh, they can look at me and say, wow, you know, he was once a kid like me. This fall, the Lions Living for the City program, along with their partners, also hosted a weekly wellness program for kids called Meet Up and Eat Up at Eastern Market. <laughs> Legendary running back Barry Sanders was one of several Lions alumni players who joined the kids for recess and lunch. I'm here um, as sort of a, a guest of the Detroit Lions um, with their initiative to uh, bring awareness um, to kids um, to, um, you know, to have a healthy lifestyle. He shared one of the secrets to his success. I was a good player. And um, part of me, for me, part of being a good player was being healthy, was eating right, taking great care of my body, uh, making great decisions, and that's what I hope for each and every one of you. Another Tuesday, former Lion safety Benny Blades took a turn at recess. He encouraged kids to get off the couch, take a timeout from video games, and get active. I am here to get involved not only with the Detroit Lions as an alumni, but get involved with what's a passionate cause in my life. That's childhood obesity and get these kids up and moving and doing stuff in their life. I see so many kids with juvenile diabetes because the parents don't know. And so you have to educate not only the parents as well as the kids. Each week, Lions executive chef Joe Nader talks about healthy eating. Eating lots of different colors, right? Because all the different colors of, of produce and vegetables and fruits all have different kinds of nutrients. So you want to make sure that you're getting lots of different colors in your diet. The kids enjoy a healthy lunch and learn about the Double Up Food Bucks program provided by the Fair Food Network. We love this partnership with the Detroit Lions and with Eastern Market because it enables these youngsters to get information in a really exciting hands-on way about Double Up Food Bucks. The Double Up Food Bucks program matches SNAP bridge card purchases at participating locations, so about 100 farmers markets statewide as well as three grocery stores in the city of Detroit. And that match is specifically for Michigan-grown fruits and vegetables. Then the kids go shopping at Eastern Market with their Double Up Food Bucks tokens. Afterwards, they learn from Wayne State medical and nutrition students firsthand how the food and exercise affects their minds and bodies. It's a day full of life-changing lessons, which hopefully inspires healthy new habits. We need to um, drink more, more water, and you need to eat more vegetables and fruits. Play 60 minutes a day or more. I thought it was just really cool how we got to meet an uh, actual football player and their mascot and it was really, really fun. And from the looks of it, it's just as much fun for the players as it is for the kids. It makes a difference and it goes a long way. And you know, we're not just here to play football, we're here to make a difference. Well, nothing like having a Hall of Famer or one of the league's hottest running backs show up at recess. You got that right. Don't go away. When we come back, the Lions are gonna team up to tackle cancer. You think you're getting past me? By the time you experience the world of pain. It's a staggering statistic. 57,000 people in Michigan will be diagnosed with cancer this year. And that's why the Detroit Lions and the Henry Ford Health System are taking a hard-hitting approach to fighting this disease. And they've recruited some powerful players to join their team. You think you're getting past me? By the time you experience the world of pain. You may have seen this promo on TV. Get in the 
again. It's part of Game On Cancer, a partnership between the Detroit Lions and the Josephine Ford Cancer Institute and Henry Ford Health System to raise awareness and funds for cancer research. The goal is to raise $15 million over the next three years. $15 million will give us the opportunity not only to support but to build upon um, the research that is ongoing. This is a terribly exciting thing for us, especially at a time when cancer research is building steam, growing, and accelerating. Dr. Robert Chapman is the director of the Josephine Ford Cancer Institute. The institute is pioneering new research that will lead to more effective treatments for cancer patients. We've learned that every individual cancer has its own personality. I don't mean every type of cancer, I mean every person's cancer, even if it's under the microscope the same type. Why is that? It's because each cancer has cells that have a different spectrum of mutations, a different group of properties that may not change how it appears under the microscope, but changes how it behaves, changes how it may respond to treatment. So researchers are collecting tumor cells, identifying what makes them unique, and creating medications that attack the cancer cells and minimize side effects. And what has always made me committed to research is that that's the only way we can get from where we are now to a better place. And nobody wants cancer care, cancer detection, anything having to do with cancer to be the same 10 years from now as it is today. The greatest reward for me is to be able to sit down with a patient and say, look, you've been on your treatment now for the past couple of months, and I can, in the clinic, I can flip up on the screen. This is what things look like on your CAT scan in September. This is what it looks like today. And when they can see, oh uh, my gosh, the tumor's practically shrunk away. It, it's, it's an indescribable feeling, absolutely indescribable. Our name is really on the map nationally and internationally as a brain tumor center, not just for the good clinical care that we give, but also some of these more fundamental research aspects that are attracting new scientists and new investigators, because this is where progress is going to happen. Companies like First Merit Michigan have joined the fight. Sandy Pierce is the CEO. We want to collaborate with that because it goes directly to what we are about. It is about helping our community get healthier. And what better way than to engage everyone in the area with an opportunity to get involved. Game on Cancer encourages everyone to get involved. You can buy 50-50 raffle tickets at all the games, or you can go online to GameOnCancer.com and buy a virtual piece of Ford Field. Donate or organize your own fundraising team. Every individual can make a difference, but together, the power and the leverage you have to influence, raise awareness, number one, turn awareness into action. So I can make a difference, but if I can get 10 of my friends together, the leverage of that as they reach out to 10 of their friends really does bring a community together. And it takes an army to fight something as devastating as cancer. It's not only fun, but it's fulfilling because it's meaningful. And when you know that you can make a difference, that feels pretty good. If you'd like more information, please go to GameOnCancer.org. We'll be right back. Taking Action for Detroit is brought to you by Priority Health, a healthier approach to health care. First Merit Bank, we're here to help. IBEW Local 58 and the National Electrical Contractors Association, the best contractors, the best electricians, period. We thank you so much for joining us for Taking Action for Detroit. We hope we've inspired you to find some way you can take action in your own community. From our Channel 7 family to yours, we wish you happy holidays. And thank you for watching. Taking Action for Detroit is brought to you by Priority Health, a healthier approach to health care. First Merit Bank, we're here to help. 
IBEW Local 58 and the National Electrical Contractors Association. The best contractors, the best electricians, period.